were still learning about our boat and didn't even know this part existed. How important could it be? We're about to find out. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ships with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? Walt Whitman There's some very important things that you need in a boat, such as a good solid hull, a way to power the boat, and a way to steer it. The latter is what troubled us on this day. We had completed all our pre-checks, engines were running, and we had pulled anchor. I was completing the task of securing and cleaning the anchor as Allie was driving us out of Rock Sound to Luthra. Allie was hand steering, and I noticed she started heading across the sound versus out. She gave me this, I can't steer the boat look, as she moved the wheel back and forth. I returned to the helm, and the wheel had no response on the rudder. Autopilot wouldn't work either. I slowed the boat down and could turn it using the engines. We safely got the boat back at anchor, and I started doing all the checks to see if there's anything I could figure out. Nothing was obvious. I kept turning the wheel until I could feel it tighten and stop and then get kind of get hard and then I would turn it hard the other way and it would tighten and stop also. Kept doing this back and forth until I felt like everything was working as it should be. I made the decision to go uh, again is we had a good weather window to cross the Exuma Sound that day and not so good in the days to follow. I would later tell myself, self, this was not the right decision. It was a 35 nautical mile trip, so that meant about five hours out in the Exuma Sound. Fortunately, the seas were favorable and the winds were light, but it was still the most gut-wrenching crossing as I continually thought about the worst case scenario. If the steering went out, and what would we do? Thank the Lord we made it safely and anchored at Soldier Key. In the days that followed, we actually moved the boat again, and I would do a lot of research and talk to the manufacturer about the issue. I also talked to several boat neighbors and friends, and it all kept coming back to the hydraulic fluid reservoir and the pressure indicated being too low. Unfortunately, the plunger on top was not working, and I had no bicycle pump. These were the only two ways to pressure up the tank. To make a long story short, uh, while discussing with a friend, Scott, from Salt Wife, he suggested I try putting a few drops of hydraulic fluid down the plunger shaft. It took several applications, but eventually the plunger started working. It sealed, and the tank started pressurizing. Slowly, the gauge increased to the suggested pressure of 30 PSI, and we were fixed. And we were ready to pull out of Staniel Key. Now, it is part of our regular maintenance checks, and any time I feel the steering getting a little too free, I check it. Another lesson learned, without incident. Now back to sunrises, sunsets, and blue water. We finally head out of Rock Sound and through the Davis Channel by Cape Eleuther and the Cape Eleuther Marina and across the Exuma Sound. This 30 mile jump had our stomachs tight with the steering issue, but we safely anchored before sunset in 24 feet of stunning clear blue water. The next morning we began exploring the stunning blue clear water of the Exumas and snorkel in one of our top spots on our list of must snorkel spots. Come along as we explore Soldier Key and get our first peek under the water in the Sea Aquarium Coral Garden.
The Sea Aquarium Coral Garden is located in the Exuma Land and Sea Park between O'Brien Key and Soldier Key. The Nature Conservatory describes this area on their website, nature.org. This protected area was the first ever land and sea park established in the world and is home to the Western Hemisphere's second largest coral barrier reef. The Keys, spanning over 100,000 acres of ocean, islands, blue holes, coral reefs, and estuaries, was the first land and sea park established in the world. It is also the oldest national park in the Bahamas, established in 1958. The waters of Exuma Keys have been managed as a no-take reserve since 1986, allowing populations of commercially important species such as queen conch, Nassau grouper, and spiny lobster to thrive. Sea turtles swim throughout coral reefs, which are teeming with marine life. Though the park is mostly water, the land is a vital refuge for several rare iguana species and marine birds. Just south of the Sea Aquarium is a Cessna that had crashed into the Exuma waters. We wanted to check it out, but the current was really strong, so I only grabbed a few shots and caught a quick glimpse. Not much to really see, so off to more exploring. We explored the beautiful water and white sand beaches and decided to give Shelby a good scrub.
Dee was ready to get the drone out and see what the sights would look like from above journey in this spectacular water. The drone is still a learning process as so some of the shots were blurry, but drone footage is getting better so more great stuff is coming in the future. The drone caught some great shots of journey and the surrounding anchorage. Next morning we could not leave until we visited the beach one more time and of course grabbed some last shots of journey in this beautiful anchorage. Time to get back on board and head over to Staniel Key and swim in the Thunderball Grotto. Oh, and get the steering fixed. 